They're like a married couple. Are y'all married? No. They're like sniffing each other. Like yeah. They just fucking hate each other. Like, yes, fuck you, we're recording. Fuck you. Jesus fucking God. How many times have we done this show? Right? <laughs> Yeah, and that said, uh, this is a gay view. I'm Dick Wolfley, and I'm here with two of my favorite people. One of them is Richard Barber, the owner of Liquid Tampa, and our host for tonight, and almost always. And the other is some guy that I met a few years ago. He has done, you know, sorted lives, queer as folks, Southern Baptist sissies. He has a show called. Dell and Emerson, what the hell? You just know, get around. It's like, I, I dude. know. It's like I didn't have enough to do on Wednesdays, so we decided to do a radio show. <laughs> yeah, so, right. It, which you know, I mean, you do radio. It's not like you go, oh, I'm just going to show up. It's like you have to prep. So all day, right. you know, Tuesday we have our meeting, and then we we we're prepping all day on Wednesday before we hit the air. But I really love radio. I love doing it. I love the internet and. It's it's been fun. It's so, been fun. So right off the bat, and we just said this before the show, on on Dell and Emerson, which was yesterday. Yes. Uh, you called in, and just before you called in, they were talking about Emerson's favorite bar in Atlanta, Swingin' Richards. Swingin' Richards. Which yes, which and, I said I was five minutes away from yeah, Swingin' and, Richards. And, so who was your favorite dancer at Swinging Richards this year? Um, you know what? I didn't go. Isn't what? that pathetic? I, what? I, I mean, I, 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 I made a joke because that's Leslie Jordan. I, he, Leslie Jordan always goes there and finds a new husband and yeah. takes him out of the... He does. Takes him home and, you know, cleans him up and... Okay, I, I never heard the years. cleans them up part. <laughs> no, he doesn't. But, um, yeah, I love Swinging uh, Richards, but... I, yeah, it was a Wednesday night, and I, I needed to travel today, so I said, this is how old I'm getting. I, I actually got to that place where I go, oh, I need to be responsible. I have to be responsible. I have three shows in a row coming up, so I have to rest, and so... God, I hope I never get I that know, old. I know, I, you know, <laughs> what's happened to me? So, you know, we were talking about Swinging Richards and all that, and one of the biggest topics on... A gay view, which is the show we're on now, right. is younger guys dating older guys. Right. And I don't know anything about that. <laughs> you do, not. <laughs> do you, Richard? No, I have no, I mean, no I don't clue. Know what, what is he talking about? I, I have absolutely no freaking clue. I, you know what? I, 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 I've kind of learned my lesson. I figure. Um, I can't. <laughs> I, you could look. You can date them. You can date them, just don't marry them. That's the thing. Okay. You know, yeah. you gotta, you gotta, you gotta figure it all out. You so, know, you gotta so, figure out life. So your your show now is called Singularly Sorted. It's yes. It's what happens when you're, you know, yeah. abruptly single in your fifties. And so, so what happens? Well, I, I mean, trust you, me, I know. You what, know, well. it's like I mean, for me, and and I'll, I'll address this in the show. Is it's like. All of a sudden, you're single, and you it's abrupt, and for me, I'm 58, um, and as I say in my show, I'm a minor gay celebrity, so I can't really hit the apps like, I mean, I, I miss the AOL chat rooms. I, I talk about that in my show. It's like, those, oh my God, remember? It's like just, you know, it was, I bet your bar took a hit during those days because it was just home shopping. You just post and you sit there and you wait for a response yeah, you, to come about. Like bait. You know, you throw out the fishing line and you go, see what happens. But, um, you know, you'll say in, in my show, I address what happens when you are a minor gay celebrity. You're back in the in the mix, and you're you, you go. Uh, there's Grinder, and there's Adam for Adam, and you're going, you know. But I can't put my face, and but they want your face, and you know. So it gets it's very convoluted, and I, I really, my, it, it's one of my. This is my favorite show so far to perform. I love performing this show. It's wicked. It's not politically correct. I I. It's not just about that. I talk. I mean, look at what's going on politically right now. I address that. So, that the so, haters that we have. So in our you community. know, right across the street from us, Hillary was here. Today. I was so upset. I'm like, okay, today I discovered the the most amazing thing, CNN app. 
literally while I am driving, I don't have to miss CNN. Yep. I can sort of prop it up. I don't have, I, I, I try to be safe when I'm driving, but it's live the whole time I'm driving from Atlanta. I can't get enough of this election. I mean, I'm like, a, like I'm going, okay, it's uh, 8.30 is the, the debate coming up. Uh, not that we won't see all the recap, but it's, it's crazy. And so when I saw that Hillary, I go, I'm on my way to Tampa. I'm missing Hillary. She's right there today, right? Was it, was it crazy? Yeah. Okay. Well, the Secret Service had everything nailed down. <laughs> did she come in for a drink at the liquid? <laughs> no, she didn't. She, so, she, to say, okay, yeah. I was a little late to the party. I was a little <laughs> late, but I'm here now. Um, I think we need to celebrate that she's here now. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit tired of people going, well, you know, she wasn't for gay marriage. For, well, she's here now, you know. She's here yeah. now, log cabin Republicans. Yeah. You're not. So, you're still so, voting for people who hate on us. So, by the way, you said... You're a minor gay celebrity. On Channel 125, you're a major gay celebrity. Well, thank you're you. You're the A-list, honey. I, you know, I, I say that because I was in a, a bar, a uh, restaurant bar in Dallas, and some drunk uh, <laughs> queen staggers up to my table and goes, my friends over there said you're a minor gay celebrity. Who the hell are you? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like... That's a, that really puts you in your place. That's like a humbling, <laughs> minor gay celebrity. One of the other things we talk about a lot about on Gay View is grinder horror stories. Do you have any grinder horror well, stories? Well, I don't want to give away my show, but no, there's a, there's not. a section called there's a section called Five Bad Dates with Dell. And sometimes I, I eliminate one. It's just called Bad Dates with Dell because you know you got to play to the crowd and see what's going on. I will tell you though, one time uh, early on when I first discovered Grinder, I uh, I hooked up with this guy and I thought, oh, this is like back to the AOL chat rooms. It feels like anonymous sex. It was fun. It was great. And then as I'm sort of cleaning up, he said, uh, I know who you are. And I played Ty in one of the, your in your play in Kansas City. And would you mind autographing my script? Oh my goodness! And I was like, Oh my! Oh, wow. So that was, you know. And then he had like all my other plays, and and you know, as a minor gay celebrity, you just pull out the sharpie and you sign. You go, sure. Yeah, anyway. sure. Uh -huh. What's your name again? <laughs> so I know you don't ever forget my name. <laughs> You're so silly. <laughs> I know that I like I like uh, Big Dick here is what I'm gonna I'm gonna oh be named. Oh, so do you have any, Richard, do you have any grinder horror stories? Unfortunately, I have none. I've, uh, when I bought the business, was the first time that I actually had downloaded the app because I was looking at trying to figure out how to market on Grinder for the club because every time, for the first month, walking through the club, the only thing I saw was everybody had their phones and everybody had a Grinder app up. Right. And so, I mean, that was... Uh, the, the extent of Grinder for me. I mean, I just uh, tried to market you, with them and then I instantly with, did deleted it. Did you advertise with them? Did, no, I did, deleted it. Yeah. <laughs> the reason why I didn't was because of what I experienced with the, uh, the pop-up ads. It didn't seem as relevant for the amount of money that they were asking for when you're just logging in and then it's just popping up that one time. And I said, well, you know, I that's not going to God for me, because I, you know, you know, I'm, I'm a big social media whore, as you know, and, and social media has been so wonderful because I can go into a city and put an event up and sell a lot of tickets because you have your fans on your fan page. But I find that the Growler app is the best bang for your buck because they have that shout feature and you can like those drink specials growler i'm telling you download growler you can get all the people on for 5.95 for a shout something like that i'm just giving all my tips yeah. away there we go so, so what's happening with sorted wedding uh sorted wedding is getting very close to uh we we you know we when we set up our, our company, we, we decided we wanted to do three pictures. We did Southern Baptist Sissies first, and then we knew that it was time to do sorted, uh, the, the sorted sequel. And I, I got really fortunate with the script because I'd written it, and then just as I, I was starting to, uh, to raise the money for the movie uh, through, through private investors, the Supreme Court decision came in. 
and I thought, oh my God, I need to update the script now because thematically, what happens when equality comes roaring in to Winters, Texas? So I brought, I brought the, the characters into 2015 because you know that Sorted Lives has always been a period piece. It's always been 2008. So, it, so now you see what happened to them and if anybody's hairstyle changed and if anybody evolved, you know, with having Ty coming out because that's what's happened to many of us is that we, we, there, there's been a face that's been put on gay and it's not just back alleys anymore. It's not just like, you know, you can come down this street here and go into a gay bar rather than going down a back alley. We're not hidden anymore. And I think that it's made a huge difference. And I, I, I truly believe that, you know, in having a sitting president who said, I'm for you guys, has made a huge difference. But you still have the Kim Davises. You still have the, the clerks in these small towns who are trying desperately to keep us from having the rights that we have now been given and granted and legally given. I mean, look what happened in Alabama just this week. They finally said, okay, we give up. You know, they kicking and screaming and gnashing their teeth. Yeah. So that's what, the thematically, that's what Sorted Wedding is about. And I, it's taken me a while, but I needed a million dollars in escrow to green light the picture, and I'm right at 950000 right now. So... I will be able to green light this picture very shortly and we're going to, um, so if anybody is rich and in love with Sorted Lives, I'm shameless, just delshoresatme.com and I'll send you an investor package. But seriously, I mean, it's been, it's been the love of the piece right. besides the fact that people go, okay, you know, Sorted Lives did all right. I maybe want to invest in that. And, but I, I say, you, you, you know, you get, you, get a, you get a little piece of gay history when you are an owner yeah. and, a, and a partner with us. And we have a great bunch of people who have come on board. I'm very grateful. So we're planning to film uh, in, in May and uh, 15 days in Canada, three days in Texas, and bring the cast back together and do it one last time. This is it, guys. This is it. So, so, so let's talk about the cast a little bit. It's been a while since you and I chatted. Yes. And uh, so I'm going to just throw out a name and give me a, an update or what's happening in the world. Let's start with Delta Burke. Delta Burke is, um, she, she declined doing the series. And I love Delta. I love Delta's performance in the movie. But Caroline Ray rocked the series, and Caroline Ray's one of my best friends, and so Caroline Ray will be reprising the role that she did in the series as Nolita Nethercott. So that was the second name on my list. How about Rue McClanahan? Well, as you know, we lost Rue, and, uh, but, but the movie honors her. And Excellent. there's a, it takes place, the movie takes place on Peggy's death day, that they're having a big, to do at the bar yeah. to honor her, and it was supposed to be 15 years, but it, but it's now 17 years in the in the movie because 15 years Odell got hit by lightning, so they had to cancel the event, uh -huh. and then and then the 16 year anniversary they lost Juanita for three days, they couldn't find her, so they had to cancel again until they found her. She was in the liquor closet. <laughs> Um, I've been there. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, now they're going to do it. <laughs> Olivia Newton-John. Olivia Newton-John is not available for the movie. Uh, I, she's still my very good friend. I love her dearly, but you know she's got her Vegas gigs and she's very passionate about her her cancer wellness center in Australia. So I will maybe ask one more time just come and sing one song. But uh, right now it looks like, and I wrote that character out. They talk about her but she's not in the movie. And now, my favorite of your characters, who has been on Channel 125, and we're gonna talk about this a little bit, Leslie Jordan. He's back. Yes, he's back. I mean, you know, I have, I have way too much on Leslie for him to say no. <laughs> well, <laughs> it, it, so, so here's the deal. So, Leslie's been on Channel 125. Art interviewed him right over there. And he said, Art asked him, 
where did all this stuff come from? And he said, Del Shore stole my life. <laughs> I sort of did still. I mean, the truth is, the, the, the real truth is, I did steal Leslie's life in Southern Baptist Sissies. I mean, a, lo- a, a part of his life, uh-huh. past life, where he was that bar fly at a hustler bar. And before he got sober, he told me a lot of stories. I wrote the script. I presented it to him. And he said, oh, my God, you wrote everything I've ever told you in this. And I said, well, and that's exactly what he told us. And I said, well, will you do it? And he goes, well, of course I'll do it. (laughs) So and he was so brilliant. I don't you know, everybody points to and he's so brilliant, his brother boy. But his performance is heartbreaking in Southern Baptist Sissies. It's it's hysterical and then it just breaks your heart i love his performance so much it's it's truly my favorite thing he's ever done i i I think that too that with leslie i mean he is an amazing actor i mean he was on will and grace Uh, won the emmy uh, won the emmy yes he he, i'm sure he told you that and (laughs) several times (laughs) did he have it on the table (laughs) i think he carries it in his suitcase at all times so so the funny part about it was we did this at the w in in uh atlanta right art interviewed him art the audience can't see but art's about five foot eleven there leslie's about four eleven four eleven yeah so Art had to do this for, through the interview. And you have leg cramps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was so good. It was so funny. Let's talk a little bit more about this election thing. What do you think about Trump? Um, I think he's really entertaining. I think that um, it's shocking to me that we thought this was a joke. And yeah, it looks right. like the joke's on us. Um, I, I talked to my brother the other day who is, a, you know, a, a Republican, I mean, or, or has voted mostly Republican. And I said, because I'm, I'm always really interested. I'm so interested in politics. I want to know. Um, I, I especially love talking to smart Republicans. I like to, to, to debate a little bit with them and, uh, and hear where they're coming from. And I said... I said, well, who are you voting for? I mean, who, who, who in your, the primary, because the Texas primary was coming up, he said, I'm not voting. He goes, I don't like any of them. And then he said, and if Trump and Hillary are the choices, I'm moving. And I go, <laughs> to Canada. I said, well, you better start packing and sell that house. A lot of people are saying that. I mean, I happen to like Hillary, but um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a crazy, I don't think I've ever seen anything like this. Have you? I, I mean, um, it, you it's, know, I think back to uh, when Ronald Reagan, because he was not a, a politician before, right. but but he was the was governor not, of California. Yeah, he and, had and, served, and, and 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 he was not a joke. Right, <laughs> this dude is a joke. I mean, it's like, what else is he going to say? Who else is he going to insult? You know? Yeah. And what I mean, in some of it, it feels like it's just for shock value. And, but he, he truly, I, I really, I mean, it doesn't seem like he can do any wrong. It looks like he's going to carry your stage. I mean, probably. sorry, Rubio, it's over. Yeah. Yep. Little Marco Rubio, I believe is what he calls him. So, so I, I, I just noticed that I missed one thing on my list here. Dirty Hollywood stories. Is that something you do? Dirty Hollywood stories. I don't do you do, know Hollywood people? I, you know what? I, t- I, I tell stories. I'm a storyteller. I feel I like that. Um, the stand-up is sort of a um, an extension of my writing. I've always my family were they were always storytellers. They they told great stories. My aunt Sissy. If you go to YouTube and you go Del Shore's Aunt Sissy, you'll see my aunt Sissy telling stories about killing that goat. And I, I always say, I, I'm not really a writer, I'm just a thief. So, yes, if there's a, if there's a story that, that I hear or I experience, uh, I have told many Hollywood yeah. stories. Uh, Diane Cannon, Raquel Welch, I told in one of my uh, shows. And uh, for a while talked about George Lopez. I, 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 it was in this show, but I... So I, what did you say about George Lopez? Because well, personally, I, mean, I think he's an asshole. Well, he is, I mean, <laughs> I'm not going to say he's an asshole, but I will tell you this story. I mean, this story tells you a lot about him, and this yeah. is why... Okay, 
because I cut this from my show so I can say it here because I usually don't say yeah. the stories I'm going right. to because I go you pay for it you go pay the $50 <laughs> to see and support the Tampa International Gay and Lesbian Film Festival um, I met his wife at a party one time and she was lovely and she was telling me this touching story about you know George Lopez was uh, in dire need of kidney I don't know if you remember this he I was do. on dialysis he was on the list not being able to have a kid, getting the transplant, and and his wife happened to be a match, and she gave him one of her kidneys, right. and then he turned around and cheated on her with her kidney inside him. He was fucking another woman with. I can say fuck, right? On this, yeah. Okay, so no, you can't say fucking fuck. So no fuck. I'm going, right. and 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 she was so like, you know, I don't. I don't always take the high road because the low road's more scenic, but you yeah, know, it's, it's like, fun. <laughs> but she was, you know, telling TMC, well, you know, we're splitting everything, we're sharing custody, she was being so civil, and I would, and I, you know, I, I could just imagine the, if I were her in divorce court, I would go, I want my fucking kidney, I want my fucking kidney. <laughs> he cheated on me with my kidney inside him. So. So we're not George Lopez fans here. <laughs> His comedy makes me laugh. Yeah, it absolutely. Does. His comedy does make me laugh. I do talk about George Lopez, but in a Leslie Jordan story. Because Leslie Jordan co-starred in Ski Patrol with George Lopez. So because of George Lopez, I have to thank George Lopez. It is, oh, full circle here, you know, bringing it back to me. Because Leslie used to be man bait for me. In Dallas, we would go to the Dallas clubs before I had notoriety. He was already famous. Yeah. And there was, he had a huge Hispanic fan base because of George Lopez, because he had done Ski Patrol. And I love Hispanic men. So the Hispanic boys would come over and I would go, oh, yeah, br br hey, he was in Ski Patrol with George Lopez. And then, you know, they would come over. So I have to think, I got laid so, a few times because of George Lopez. So af just just so you know, after the show tomorrow night, your show? Yes. This is Latin night here at Liquid. Oh. Yes, it is. Friday night is Latin night. So, and Latin I've got to tell you. Latin boys. Go-go boys? You got go-go boys? Got go-go yep. boys. Latin go-go boys? Uh, we have a couple that'll be Okay. In. All right. Well, y'all come out. I mean, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll probably be going. I, if I'm not responsible to Fort Lauderdale, because I have to drive there and do a right, show on yeah. Saturday night, I will be here. You're tempting me. You're really tempting yeah. me with the Latin boys. It, it, it is fun. It yeah. is fun. So, Richard, you got any questions for Dale? How, I mean, as far as all of the stuff that you've done and everything else uh, with Queer, of, Queer as Folk, how did you... Um, enjoy. Well, let's, hear a, let's hear a queer as folk well, story. You know, I, mean, I know this. But, yeah, uh, I, I, I mean, I don't, I, I, I've retired the trashing of anybody on queer as folk because, <laughs> because I did it. You know, yeah. I did it. I will say this about queer as folk: it truly was the best TV experience, even with Sorted Lives the series. Ultimately, queer as folk trumps that because it was at a time in my life where um, I, I wasn't looking for that job. I was a fan of that show, and the so I have to always thank Swoosie Kurtz, the actress Swoosie Kurtz got me that job, because she was on Sisters, that uh, the creators, Dan and Ron, Dan, uh, Dan uh, Lipman and Ron Cowan created Sisters, they also created the American version of, of Queer as Folk. Yeah. I did a movie with Swoosie and Olivia Newton-John in Australia, she came back and saw Southern Baptist Sissies on stage, and she called them and she said, I understand, I heard that you're looking for a writer on Queer as Folk. You have to go look at Del Shores. And they came on a Saturday night and they hired me on a Monday. And it was three years of the best years of my career. I loved writing that show because we were able to just take our gay lives and put it on screen. Uh, nobody was censoring us. Showtime gave us full reign and said, you know, they, I, I think it was because they just didn't understand the success. They didn't understand the community. They were, they go, they know what they're doing. We're going to leave them alone. We cannot 
tell them how to write that storyline, and they didn't. It was amazing, and it was it was. I, I'm really really proud of my work. And, I mean, and you were kind of responsible for the way the show ended, right? Well, you know, people think that, but that's not. We were very. That's not true. Um, I, I was responsible for one big moment in the show where I fought for it and I got it, and that was when Brian kissed Justin and said he and said said when he said I love you. Yes. No, but when he said I love you, yes. when he kissed him in that in in that scene in Babylon, and he said I love you because he had kissed him many times, but he never said I love you. Right. But when he almost lost him, and he said I love you, and they did Ron Cowan, who I adore, he's one of my mentors as a writer. He said I never want Brian to utter those three words, and I said the fans have earned it. We have because yeah. I am one of them, and I said just do me a favor. Let's end the show with those three words, and you can cut it out if it doesn't work. Because all you have to do is edit it, it out. I said, just works. please shoot it. And I remember that that day that Ron came to my office and he said you were right. And so I, I I'm proud of that. I'm proud that I got to give Brian that moment. Absolutely, Richard. Which character would you be from Queer as Folk? You know, that's one of the things from Queer as Folk. We all, every every gay guy in the world, picked a character and said that's me. Which one would you be? Well, I would have to say that uh, years ago that I would have been more attuned to Bri being Brian as most of I anything. I see that. You know, I see that. I mean, and if you ask uh, you a lot of people in Tampa, Florida, they think that I'm a narcissist, uh, stuck up attitude. Well, blah, you blah, think blah, about blah, it, blah. Uh, <laughs> Brian bought Babylon. I mean, you know, it's like it, it, it makes sense. Yeah. You know, I mean, a, a lot of a lot of uh, the the build up in the in the previous years actually mirrored somewhat to how I used to live my life. Right. Not as much drugs, but to the most part of not really caring anybody, not wanting to get close to people, just going around for the next yeah. trick, you know, taking advantage of the situation and. And being really intelligent because I love I, and I loved Gail Harrell's per, per performance of Brian. I just felt like that he nailed that character and you know Gail is straight in real life and right. and he never ever questioned anything that we wrote for him. He always committed to it, always did it to the degree that he was such. I feel like that Gail was is still underrated as an actor. I think he. He's got movie star potential. He's just so powerful. I loved him, and I loved that character. That was a fun character to write. They all were. I mean, Debbie, you know, the lesbians. I was always the lesbian champion in the <laughs> writer's room. I'd go, hey, we're forgetting the lesbians. <laughs> I remind them every time I see Taya and Michelle, I go, remember, I used to fight for you in the writer's room. <laughs> Where can we get... All your stuff, the DVDs, the CDs, you know? What, well, first of all, I mean, you know, before I say th that, I always find me, always find me on Facebook, because that's where, I'm a Facebook guy. I do tweet, I do Instagram some, but if you just search Del Shores, you will find yeah. my fan page, and it's it's a wonderful little community that we've gathered there together, and it we is. talk some shit, and we, I post things, I, 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 I treat it like, you know my shows I, I right. say what I have to say and if you if you don't like it you're a guest in my house then you can leave that's what I tell people um, but uh, shop Del Shores shop Del Shores .com is where you can get all of my merchandise and I'm very and that grateful. would include Southern Baptist sissies and everything 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 okay. I don't sell queers folk I mean I, I, just things that I've written and created but um, but I and I'm always grateful for those, you know, those people who come yeah. and shop and help, you know, pay for those go-go boys when I do make it to Sweet and Richards. Okay, very <laughs> I, cool. I've always said, you know, in my stand-up, I always say I would rather support a go-go boy than give to the homeless because they're working, exactly. they're working for the money. Yeah. Absolutely. 